Welcome to this BioFMQ tutorial. My name is Hannah and today we will have a look at the denoising of images in detail. In previous tutorial you have already learned what the different steps of segmentation are, so today we want to focus on the denoising part. If you acquire fluorescence images, usually you have some background fluorescence that you would like to get rid of in order to achieve a better segmentation. Biofilm Q offers a number of filters that help you with that. The first filter offered by Biofilm Q is to denoise the images by convolution. This blurs the image a bit, but it has the advantage that salt and pepper noise in the background gets reduced by a lot, so in the end the image will look much smoother and the segmentation is going to be improved. If you're an unexperienced user, you can always use this option with the default uh, values back here. However, you can also play around with these values and we're going to do that in a moment in an example to see what happens. The second filter offered by BioFMQ is to suppress floating cells by median filtering along Z. In this case, cells which appear only in one slice of the C stack are going to be removed. Finally, the top head filter reduces background fluorescence as well as fluorescence between cells, so it helps to separate cells from each other. We are now going to have a look at two different examples of options that you can pick for these denoising and see what they look like after segmentation. We'll start with the default options where you have a denoising by convolution with relatively small values back here, as well as the top head filter applied. The thresholding will be explained in an additional tutorial. Today we will use this bottom part here because it gives you a preview of what the segmentation would look like. Be sure to select the second option in this drop-down menu and then click on this button here to open an author view which shows the cells and how they would be separated from background. In this author view the background appears blue and the cells appear as grayscale. You can see a slice in the middle here, as well as the ZX and ZY view on both sides. This would be the segmentation result with our chosen denoising options. Let's have a look at what happens if you don't apply the top head filter, which can be useful for example to save time. But instead, we will also increase the filter size for the denoising, so we will blur the images more. I will now put the two views next to each other so that we can have a better look and better comparison between them. If we go through the biofilm, you can see that the cells are much larger in this option here where we have chosen a larger blurring. And you can also see that spaces between cells have been filled. If you look at the CX and the CY view, you can see that the biofilm appears to be much more as a unit rather than just like cells next to each other. When would you want to apply this kind of noising or this kind of noising? In this case here, you can still resolve the spaces between cells, which means you can calculate parameters like, for example, local cell density in the biofilm. This would not be possible or would not lead to an accurate result in the segmentation here, because spaces between cells have been filled. However, in this case, you will be able to calculate fluorescence between cells, for example, if you have matrix component in another channel, or invading cells. So if you want to count these kind of signals, it's better to fill the spaces between cells and get the biofilm kind of as a big blob instead of single cells next to each other like it is the case here. So now we have seen that depending on the kind of question, you might want to apply different filters for denoising. And in further tutorials, you will learn how you can also optimize, for example, the thresholding method.